Hi guys, welcome to Sparshot College. Uh, this is the AMC, the Animal Management Centre. Um, we've got a whole host of animals to show you today. So we're going to start off with the amphibians and reptiles. If you'd like to follow me. On amphibians and reptiles, we've got uh, about seven rooms. Uh, this is reptile room one. And in here, we've got a variety of different reptiles that you might link with um, beginner uh, species. So ranging from things like your bearded dragons over here, uh, we've got three in here at the moment, uh, to corn snakes, milk snakes. Uh, we've also got some small children's pythons, um, water dragons over here, um, some small species of boa as well. And then of course, we've got our um, well-established group of radiated tortoises. Uh, in this room, you'd be doing things like um, learning to handle, uh, correct handling techniques, uh, a little bit of um, uh, first aid, um, health checks, uh, also learning about the natural history of the animals as well. Um, and generally getting a good overview of what you need to know to keep animals like this in captivity. Uh, also, we do have uh, a trio of sailfin dragons. And these are one of the only breeding groups of um, sailfin dragons in the UK. So you have a chance to work with those. And they would represent a slightly higher species to work with, slightly more advanced. Um, but there's no reason why you can't work hard and move on to things like that. Uh, we also do quite a lot of breeding on, on uh, the amphibian and reptile section. So at the moment we've got some baby uh, bull snakes, which are due to be moving off to a different collection. Um, we've also just had a load of baby scorpions. These are an emperor scorpion. And uh, we have 23 of them. I don't know if you'll be able to see them there. So these should still be growing by the time we see you again. And then of course we've got a small species as well like this uh, rough green snake who is hiding away at the moment. Probably just about to see his tail. Yeah, very much hidden away in there. Uh, and of course, just like every other section, we're always progressing. So we're doing a new build. This species is going into a new enclosure with a species of tree frog and also annals. So it'll be a cohabitation enclosure as well. So we're always progressing. It's always about progression. Uh, what we're gonna do is move into room two. Uh, reptile room two is actually more full of amphibians. So in here, we have lots of frogs and toads, ranging from things like the um, uh, golden dart frogs, uh, which we also have in with the red-eyed tree frog, so that's a little cohabitation tank. And then what I was talking to you of before, the uh, rough green snake is gonna be going into this enclosure with some frogs. Um, and then we have like your classic uh, white tree frogs, like these little guys in here, you can just see that one there, it's just hidden behind the cork bark. Uh, we have things like mossy frogs, which are a really beautiful species. Uh, and we breed a lot of these species as well. We do very well with our amphibian breeding. Um, what else have we got there? Oh yeah, the very characteristic blue dark frogs. I'm just going to open this one up because it stays really humid. And there we go. As you probably noticed, we, we put a lot of live plants in our tanks. So a lot of these in here are semi-bioactive tanks. Um, so they've got little habitats going on inside enclosures. Um, we're quite keen to carry on that and, and teach you about how you would uh, make an enclosure like that as well. Uh, also in here, we don't just have amphibians. We do have our large monitor species. So uh, this is Keith. Keith is a roughneck monitor and um, he hasn't been with us very long. We actually got him off of the RSPCA 
um, out of the, one of their rescue centres down in Brighton, but he's doing really well. Uh, and we also have um, Baldwin, who is a, a horned chameleon. And you'll also have a chance to work with him and feed him and watch his crazy tongue. And then, as I said, we have uh, seven rooms. So we're gonna shoot through this next room because it's in the middle of being cleaned. Uh, we've just redone a load of these Herptech tanks. Um, so they've been replanted and reworked. But in this room, we have things like uh, our baby, our boas are due to uh, drop a load of um, babies. So we're gonna have, um, all, all of our baby boas are gonna be in here. Uh, as a, like a communal tank while they grow until we can move them onto other collections. Uh, we've got things like eyed lizards that when we eventually build our native species area, um, which is being built up in a field X, which is a, another part of the AMC, they'll go outside into outdoor enclosures. Uh, leopard geckos down here in this lovely tank. Um, we have uh, legless lizards, which unfortunately aren't out because they do like to burrow. Uh, and we also have a, a rainbow burrow, which you can just about see just under the log there. Just hiding out. Cool. So we're going to move through into our other rooms. Uh, I'm quite keen to show you the crop room. So this is a, a semi-aquatic room where we house our resident crocodile. So I'm just gonna open up this enclosure for you so you can get a better look. Uh, he is um, called O'Doyle, and O'Doyle is a West African dwarf crocodile. And we've had him since he was, since he was young. And uh, he's, doing, he's doing pretty well in this enclosure. Uh, we also keep things like the critically endangered um, leaf turtles. Uh, there's some right down there just looking at you to see if, if you're going to feed them. Uh, we also breed these as well. And uh, there's hardly any of them left in the wild and there's hardly any in captivity. So we do particularly well uh, with captive breeding and moving animals onto other collections. Uh, O'Doyle is generally used for training, so we target training. He has his little target here which he responds to so we can move him up and down the enclosure. And that's also another key skill that you'll learn on the AMC, particularly working with more exotic animals. Um, in a zoo, uh, you'd be a lot less likely to be hands-on, but use training tools to manipulate your animal to go where it needs to go. Okay. Uh, right, so we're going to go into room four next. Uh, room four has our slightly more advanced species. Um, so we have things like the monkey-tailed skinks, which haven't come out yet, but you can see a couple of tails here. Uh, and we breed these uh, about every two years. The female will have a live birth. So she's uh, an example of a reptile that doesn't lay eggs, that gives birth to live young. Um, and they're also really, really super cute. Uh, we have our um, green tree python, female green tree python. Again, another example of quite an advanced snake to keep, balancing humidity, heat and ventilation is very important. Uh, we also have, where are you? Our emerald tree monitors. Um, we're actually one of only a couple of zoos that have managed to captive breed these um, and we are very hopeful that in the next clutch we, we should have some more babies as well. In here you, we have uh, Amazon tree boa. So Amazon tree boa again um, when we're talking about arboreal boas and pythons, they tend to be slightly more advanced species to keep um, because of the dimensions and the gradients that you have to look at. Very similar to the green tree python, we've got emerald tree boa in here. Show you. And these really show you an example of convergence. So two species that live on completely different continents but look exactly the same. 
Uh, in this end one, we have um, currently set up a temporary enclosure, which is holding our gravid female hog island boas, and she's due, she's due to pop any minute now, so we should get maybe about 15 to 20 baby boas, um, and then they will go back into their original tank in room three. Okay, so now we're gonna go into uh, the last room that I'm gonna show you on the reptile and amphibian section, um, and that is our venomous room. Um, we're very lucky to actually have a venomous room uh, in a college. Um, it's a small collection at the moment, but it's got plans to grow uh, in terms of venomous. Um, we always keep this door locked. Uh, we have to keep it locked for zoo licensing. Okay, in you come. So this is our venom room. Um, as a student, uh, obviously until you've had any sort of training on venomous, um, we actually house you this side of the cage, uh, so you're nice and safe. But that allows us a good space to get out the venomous, show you some handling techniques or techniques of dealing with them, things like tubing and pinning, um, so that you can watch from a safe distance and learn about some of these techniques. We also highlight quite heavily uh, zoo protocol with dealing with them and things like health and safety as well. So you can come in this time. So uh, at the moment we've just got three species uh, in this room. It's quite a new room that we built um, last year. So it's still, as I said, always progressing. Uh, this enclosure here has our mangrove uh, snake. Um, and again, we use her to get out and, and show you how to deal with an arboreal fast uh, rear fang snake. Uh, in this one, oh, she's actually out. Uh, we have our Gila monster. Um, who is very placid, but um, as you'll learn, has a wicked bite on her, so we have to treat her as we would any other venomous species. And then in this one, um, she's usually, yeah, she's down on her little um, pad there, is a um, false water cobra. So we've got three species at the moment, and then what we're gonna do in this bottom one is we're actually in the process of getting some adders, some native adders, um, which we're going to get from Jersey Zoo uh, and they're going to go in this bottom enclosure here. Uh, these two enclosures are going to be set up for dissertations for things like um, if you're doing a degree or a master's degree then these two enclosures you can set them up how you want and look at differences in behaviour or differences in behaviour in terms of heating and lighting. So there are Lots of different options for dissertations and master's projects for you, which we help. We always help help you set them up and help you run them as well. Cool, so that's actually the last room uh, that I'm gonna show you on the herp section. We do also have a amphibian nursery, um, but that is in the process of being moved. So by the time I see you next, it will be in a new room. So what we're gonna do is head off and I'm gonna show you some more of the Animal Management Centre because I am biased. I'll probably spend all day showing you the reptiles and amphibians. And up here, uh, immediately on our right, we have our outdoor tortoise enclosure. So not today, because it's overcast and it's starting to spit. Um, we would usually put our Herman's tortoises out our Egyptian tortoises, the tiny little tortoises, would go outside and also the radiated tortoises would go into that larger paddock at the back there as well and that gives them a chance to be outside in the sun. Uh, there's lots of opportunity to adapt the enclosures uh, like this for students to adapt them and change them and maintain them as well. So maintenance is always a big part of being an animal keeper, not just for your animals but also for your enclosures. And this one was helped, helped being built by students last year. Um, and uh, they've done a good job, it does, it does, does, the, does what it needs to do um, and it's, it's allowed our tortoises to have a nice big outdoor enclosure. Uh, in here we've got a couple of hill aviaries, so we've got churicos and um, uh, pheasants in there and then we've got some pigeons over there. Now the pigeons, not usually a classic zoo species but they're really good for learning how to catch and net a bird which if you're a keeper um, is a skill that you might come across um, having to catch up your birds and pigeons um, they, they sort of take to it a bit better than some of our more exotic birds. They're a bit more hardy, uh, less likely to get any damage from it. So 
Apologies for the sort of mess, but this is an area where our new our construction team are going to be coming in and working on this area through the hedge. So this has sort of been left uh, open at the moment. Um, but on the right, we have Pepe's uh, skunk enclosure, um, which was built a couple of years ago. And students regularly go in there and change it. They, you know, move logs around, they make shelters, um, things for them to climb, um, things for them to dig into. And he's quite feisty and quite friendly. So through here, this is actually where we're gonna have a nice big development. So this used to be outdoor rabbit and uh, guinea pig enclosures. So you can see all the old fencing. This is all being torn down in the next month or so. And we're gonna actually build a large um, tropical house. It's gonna have four parts to it. Um, so we're gonna house our meerkats, which are currently in their old, in, old setup at the moment. So it's gonna have meerkats, um, marmosets or tamarinds. It's also going to have a mixed bird uh, aviary and also the lemurs are going to have an extension to their enclosure as well. I'll show you the lemurs later. Uh, but it's going to be nice big polytunnel, really tall outdoor enclosures that are going to be level with the red panda enclosure. And so you'll be, when you walk along this path, you'll be looking down into their outdoor enclosures. It's going to be really quite fantastic. The key thing about this project is it's going to have a huge part uh, of glass which allows UV to actually transmit into the enclosures. So most of the tropical houses you might have seen, um, they have to supplement UV for a lot of their animals and we won't need to. We'll just rely on the sun going through this transmissible glass and then we can actually watch more natural behaviours on an inside environment. It's going to be fantastic. Along here, we're now sort of getting into exotic mammal terrain. So we've seen Pepe's enclosure. This one on the left here, this is our red panda enclosure. I wonder if they'll be out because the weather is not very nice. That would be typical, wouldn't it? I promise you we have red pandas. We actually have two red pandas. Um, we got a female last year and we're very hopeful that next year um, we could possibly get some baby red pandas as well. So that's really exciting. And uh, we got the go ahead to breed them and got a beautiful female um, in there. And they're getting on well. Sometimes they sleep next to each other. Um, and well, they don't hate each other. So, you know, it's gonna, I think it's gonna go really well. The keepers are excited and obviously a red baby red pandas are gonna be super cute. So you don't wanna miss out on that. Um, this is another enclosure that our students had uh, a lot to do with designing and building. Um, so this is uh, raccoon dogs. Uh, we actually rescue the raccoon dogs from the RSPCA again um, because there's plenty of exotic animals that um, don't have, they don't get given the, the homes that they need. And so we, you know, we try and balance things out from having zoo animals to rescue exotic animals as well. Um, and this is a group of four. So we've got two sort of, sort of pairs. Uh, they don't breed because um, they've been done. And um, you have a chance to go in there and feed them. And um, with mammals, there is a lot of training as well. So a lot of chance to hone your training skills to get your animals to do things that they need to do, functional things. Not like jumping through a hoop or anything like that, but sitting on scales to be weighed. Um, or even showing a part of their body so you can give them a health check. All of the things that are really ve relevant for um, good welfare uh, of an animal keeper. So we're gonna carry on down here and I'm gonna show you some of the pheasant aviaries. So we have really nice amphibian and reptile section. The exotic mammal section is really starting to build up as well. And with the new builds, it's only gonna get bigger. And then up here, we have our pheasantry. Now it's called a pheasantry, we mostly do house pheasants in there, but at the moment, while we're preparing to build more enclosures, we also have things like the ibis. Hello. <laughs> and in the background, in the next one over, we also have chuffs as well. Um, behind this instalment, we have a large red crane, uh, crane enclosure. And the idea, hopefully, is that we're going to be 
uh, revamping that enclosure and including the ibis. So we're going to have a, a quite a large, almost walkthrough enclosure out the back. So we're going to head round here and we're going to start heading up into the paddocks. If you're a bird keeper or have a real interest in birds, it's something that we don't actually see very often. Um, birds aren't usually the ones that people want to work with, but it's a very rewarding job. And actually, um, things like zoos are always short of good bird keepers. So it's a good one to actually get invested in. So this is a temporary sort of crane enclosure. They will be at the back. And this is a 50 meter squared area that is going to be completely revamped, new fencing, new top. It's going to have multiple species in there and there's a potential to make it a walk through as well. So it's a nice big area that at the, at the moment has just got cranes in. Um, but yeah, again, it's all about progression, progression of the collection and, and making sure that we can um, provide the best welfare and husbandry that we can for our animals. The crane's just peeking its head up over there actually. So here we are on our paddock section. Um, this is one of the largest uh, sections that we have on the animal management centre. Um, and it goes right the way down to the, to the hedge line over there. We've got species like uh, the chickens and the ducks. Uh, we've also got things like wallabies, mara. Uh, we've got some zebu, which are like a little pygmy cow. There's one just over there seeing what we're doing. Um, and we're gonna walk down here uh, sections like this, but not just this section, are uh, all about getting stuck in. So this isn't just something that you'll come and look at, you'll actually be doing husbandry. Um, and we're, as a college, we actually dedicate a lot more time to that than, um, than usual. So actually you spend a whole day um, on a section and in that time you'll be doing things um, like actually getting involved in the husbandry, so sorting the waters out, feeding, cleaning of course. Um, and then you'll also have a lesson with an instructor like me uh, who will go through things, uh, perhaps a little bit more of a theory side on the practical side, things like handling um, and uh, diets and um, also, oh, Gordon's just come up to say hello. This is Gordon, our goose. Uh, you're gonna love him. Gordon, yeah, we've got, they're all coming to see look, and the zebu. So yeah, it's all about getting stuck in. And as an animal keeper, um, it's a very practical job. It's a bit of a strange one because you have to have sort of um, the academic side, the knowledge of, of, of the species that you're keeping. And then you also have to almost have a bit more of a physical side where you're doing the actual work um, to keep them healthy. So on our right, we've got all of the alpacas. They're all staring at us. They've just had a haircut. So they look a bit bemused. And then up in that top right corner, in with the alpacas, we have three rhea, which are a bit like a, a, an ostrich or an emu. Cool, let's carry on down. On our left, oh, there's a wallaby out there, look. Just over there is a wallaby, and just there, and then the mara, they always sit and sleep. Naughty goat. Bit further down so at the moment because there's still lots of space on paddocks to use um, some of our animals have double paddocks so uh, the um, alpaca and the rear also have this uh, space on the left so they've got loads of room um, to graze and walk about and that means lots of potential to adapt an enclosure as well so the sort of the next things we want to think about doing is putting concrete pools in so they've got a stable uh, water source rather than and coming away more from sort of troughs. Got goats on the left hand side, naughty goats. Uh, that climbing frame that you can see was built by students um, and the goats just they absolutely love to climb on it and they play lots of games on it as well like headbutting each other. Um, so again paddocks is a great one to get stuck in and um, learn some skills to adapt and work with uh, the land and the enclosure that you've got. And then down here, we have our donkeys. 
which might come over. So we have some lovely donkeys that you can work alongside um, and they sort of represent one of the larger paddock animals that we have. Um, so getting your confidence with larger animals is, is really extremely important. Um, so you'll be learning how to harness and uh, he's not sure what to make of that. Uh, you'll be learning to harness, uh, move them around, uh, do things like hoof picking as well and learning uh, you know, your, your general health for a larger animal. And it's good because we, we have assessments so you get assessed on small and large animals as part of the criteria so you have to have skills for both. Um, and you'll actually be assessed on different sections as well. So it's really important that you don't come in thinking, well, I just want to work with this animal um, because you'll, you'll be working with all the, all the sections. Um, and that's really good because when it comes to jobs, um, generalists is, is a good way to go. So you come out of college with a good foundation of a variety of different species. And then the, the skills and the tools that we've given you on a variety of different species can then be honed, uh, say if you did an internship at a zoo or if you decided to uh, go for a junior keeper job or a first animal job, um, that's where you can start to specify. <laughs> uh, on the right here we've got our old chicken pens. So again, this is a large space that we're looking to revamp. Again always progressing, always changing things, um, making sure that we can provide really good husbandry. We've actually got a load of eggs in the incubator at the moment to increase the chicken numbers, so there's more for you to attempt to catch. Um, And this is a good area because there's lots of things shaking up on here. So the animals will be switching around, be utilising different bits. So probably going to move perhaps the donkeys up to this area and maybe the goats down to the far area. And that means that we can change use of the short barn. There's loads of potential for use here. Um, oh, we don't want to miss our resident kookaburra. He's just sitting in there. Are you going to call for us? Go on building up. It's like, no, it's not nice weather. I'm not going to. Okay, so we're going to come, uh, this is at the front of paddocks. We've got our um, short barn on the right there. Um, and during summer, it's a chance for us to get lots of things built, moved, uh, repainted, re revamped. Um, and so that's what we're in the thick of at the moment, really. So uh, we're coming off of paddocks now and we're going to head through our uh, pond area. The pond area is actually a project that we're keen to change. Um, previously these have both been netted. The netting's going to come off. Uh, the ponds are going to be re-naturalised and we're going to pump and filter the water through and basically create a nice pond natural area. Um, previously it was used as an enclosure, but we feel that it's going to be better for the surrounding wildlife if we can actually hone it for something different. Um, so that's a fantastic project that you might get stuck into on, say, estate skills. So stuff like this, um, you know, pruning, building. Uh, also with the large crane enclosure that we talked about previously, there's uh, lots of potential for you to join in on building large enclosures. So there's lots of exciting things and projects that we're just about to start or we'll be in the thick of it by the time we see you again. And last but not least, uh, we have our lemur enclosure. Um, so this houses three lemurs. Again, I'm sorry, I promise you they're in there. Uh, let's see if we can find them. They're in. It's horrible weather, they're, they are in. But uh, we have three black lemurs in here. And again, lots of chance for you to do training, uh, but also enrichment as well. So enrichment feeding, coming up with uh, comical, but um, very practical and functional ways to feed them that keep them interested and stimulated. Um, so this is a really great um, species to work with, very common in zoos. And this will have an extension onto our new tropical house. So there'll be um, basically a high walk 
where the lemurs will be able to travel along a, a high tunnel into another enclosure. So they'll literally be walking above you, which could be good, it could be very risky. Wear a hat, like I do. So we're at the bottom part now of where the tropical house is going to be built. We've just seen a keeper just dashing away. Uh, so the tropical house is going to be here. Um, there's going to be tunnels going to the lemurs. There'll be tunnels going into the, the building um, here, which is the interactive zone. Um, so that means that things like our tamarinds or marmosets can have a truly indoor shelter um, away from the tropical house or we can use it for training to move them into a different area or we can isolate an individual for uh, health checks or for whatever reason really. Uh, we do also have uh, meerkats in here but again it's a, it's, a, it's a case that we are moving them into a new enclosure so uh, their enclosure at the moment is in a bit of um, pandemonium where we're rebuilding and revamping. The areas in here which uh, we're not going to show you as well are uh, our rodent areas, so rabbits, guinea pigs, rodents, small mammals. Uh, again, this is actually because we're building a huge facility, a new domestic centre, um, which is a little way off the AMC, um, but it's going to be a brand new centre and it will house all of our domestic species. So um, they are all in flux at the moment as well. They're all in the middle of moving. So you have a chance to see all the new stuff when you arrive, uh, it'll be pretty much finished um, for you to see as you come when you come, and you'll get a chance to enjoy new facilities, um, new enclosures, and and really be able to get your teeth stuck into building new things as well. Cool. Uh, I hope to see you soon. Um, so please come along to Sparshot and and work with all our fantastic animals.